Oh yeah, this new MMO. I was gonna look at this, Embers Adrift. We'll see what the uh, the Lazy Peon video is about it, and uh, we'll go from there. See how good this game is. I watched, I watched a clip of this game, and it looked so bad. It looks so so bad. So I'm going into this with a bit of a bias, but I, I will try to be open minded and look at what's going on. Here we go old school MMORPG design. Back in the days where cooperating with other players was necessary to progression and the entire game was impossible to solo. Did you enjoy the likes of EverQuest, Ultima Online and Project Gorgon? Are you Very excited exciting. for Pantheon Rise of the Fallen? No. If the answer to any of those questions is yes, then the game we're going to be talking about in this video is likely oh, to wow. be right up your alley. Embers Adrift. This brand new MMORPG offers a modern take on old school MMO design, this looks nice. with good graphics, a meaningful crafting system in which you cannot master everything, strategic tab targeting mm -hmm. combat, and an immersive world in which navigation is part of the gameplay due to there being no traditional MMO map that shows you where you are at all times. And Wait, there's there's no map in the game? What the fuck? Okay. The Drift started its development back in 2014 as Saga Good of graphics. No, I, I think that the graphics in this game are above, a, or at least maybe slightly above average for a, a, an, an online game like this, an MMORPG. No map. Senior, later rebranding to Embers Adrift in 2021. Okay. From the outset, this game was designed to be a highly social group-based PvE MMO with no microtransactions. I mean, like, if you look at this gameplay, I, I think this is a good way to see it. Whenever I look Embers at this adrift. gameplay right here, this does not excite me to play a game. Like, that, whenever I see that, I, I don't think to myself, oh, man, I, I better download it right now. Oh, my God old school business model with a box cost plus a subscription fee. Yeah. Next, let's jump into my first impressions. During the recording of this video, I was really sick though, so no face cam or live reaction. Okay. But first, sponsor. Oh, March of Empires is a free-to-play medieval MMO strategy game and empire builder available cross-platform on Steam and mobile devices where legendary nations unite to clash in territorial conquest. Starting out, you'll choose the leader of your faction, King, Sultan, Tazar, or the brand new Japanese Shogun faction added recently in the biggest update of the year. The Shogun faction come with their own unique Japanese aesthetic for all units, buildings, castles and armor, as well as passive strengths that give them an advantage over other factions in certain styles of gameplay. Once you've chosen- This looks like Age of Empires, but it's a phone game. Pretty much. In your leader, you'll need to place buildings, manage resources, recruit troops for your army, and strategically deal with everything related to running an empire. From being invaded by enemies, joining an alliance, crafting legendary gear for your champion, and upgrading your castle's defenses. After playing much of Empires for a bit, the thing I liked most about the game was its charming art style, as well as the battle replay view that shows exactly what went well or wrong with your battle strategy. Additionally, I think it's cool that you can later unlock historical figures such as Genghis Khan, the Lionheart, and Joanna Vark as your champions. Click the link in the description below That's to play cool. March of Empires now, and get 5,000 gold for free to help you begin your epic conquest of the realm. I Ta wish they made these games, uh, like, more real-time, like the same as, like, StarCraft or actually Age of Empires or something like that. Uh, I, I think people would actually play them a lot more. But I think that a lot of people that play phone games, like, it's hard. Like, think about, like, microing troops on a phone. Like, it's probably actually hard to do that. Download now. Starting out, open the game, and you're hit with this charming old-school soundtrack that instantly gave me vibes of being an adventurer exploring a vast, mysterious world. Yeah, Create like character, that. and visually, I thought the character models looked quite realistic. Look okay, sure. Standard choices of male and female, no yeah. crazy race options to choose from, as Got this it. is a low fantasy MMO. You can customize your hair by combining multiple styles on the top, back, and sides. Oh, that's cool. Facial I like that. hair, body paint, complexion, and most interesting of all, 
you're actually able to make your character truly fat in this <laughs> game. Not just slightly chubby, but a real chonker. Okay. Not many MMOs actually Great. give you this option, and you're also able to adjust the muscle tone too. So I found this to be the most amusing part of character. I'm going to be honest. I actually think that the uh, character creator and like the amount of options the game gives you are, is pretty good. I, yeah, I think this is actually pretty fucking good creation three role choices dps support or tank choosing the dps role reduces mm. your threat generation sure. whilst choosing tank does the opposite preview our character in different gear wow. once again looks very realistic amazing choose a name and enter the game we enter the world of new haven and okay. unlike 90 percent of mmos i'm not immediately greeted by a giant exclamation mark or arrow the size of my screen telling me where to go Okay. I read the prompts, got familiar with movement, and was amused by the scuffed jumping sound effects. <laughs> then I opened my map, and to my surprise, it didn't display my character's live location. Does this mean I'm actually going to need to pay attention to my surroundings and use points of interest to navigate? I continued down the road and spoke to an NPC called Dante. I feel like having no map is interesting. Like, it, it's an interesting idea, even though I, I think most people would probably use some sort of, like, an overlay that creates a map while they play the game. The same as, like, people, like, use, like, a PoE trade macro and stuff. So, I, yeah, I feel like it's one of those things that's, like, interesting for a day and annoying for the, all the rest of the time that you play it. He didn't have any marker above his head indicating that he had a quest for me, and as you'll see throughout this video, none of the NPCs do. You actually need to talk to them and go through their multiple choice dialogue options like an old school RPG to see what they can offer you. Okay. Dante taught me that resting by the campfires known as Ember Rings is how I should recover my health and energy. I continued down the path, spoke to Rhonda, learned some basic combat controls, spoke to another NPC which taught me about the three gathering professions, yeah. forestry, hunting, and prospecting. That's nice. I chose to be a prospector, and at that point it was night time. Night time in Embers Adrift is extremely dark. So dark that without a torch, it's kind of hard to see what's ahead of you. That's exciting. I ran into another NPC, wow. this time after quite a bit of dialogue, he had a quest for me. Although, once again, no quest markers or anything holding my hand. I think I talking to the NPCs in order to activate a quest from them, like, that's kind of interesting. I don't think that's a big deal. Like, it, it, it's cool that they have that. It's also fine if they don't. I, I think that's kind of just a design choice. Like, Ash, I remember, like, the Ashes of Creation Alpha had that, and I was like, okay, that's fine. But I think that what average players are going to do is just go through and just keep clicking on them until it gives it the quest, right? You just go through process of elimination. I actually tedious. had to read yeah. the quest to see what he wanted me to do. The game then gave me a quick tutorial on how to distinguish mob difficulty, as mobs don't display okay. levels next to their portrait, at which point I whipped out my torch and ran off into the wilderness grinding I feel like not showing levels is like one of those things that there are sometimes games that try to like reinvent the wheel, and, and they end up inventing instead of a wheel, it's like a... Uh, uh, it's like a stick, and they're like, wow, look at this. It, it drives completely differently. It's totally different. It's like, yeah, it is, and that's the problem. Like, there's a lot of, yeah, it's a square. I, I get that there are times where people want to reinvent and, like, reimagine ideas and games, but I think that also a lot of times whenever that happens, it ends up where they are reinventing things that just make sense. Like, for example, like a game that doesn't have like a head, like a HUD or like a UI, you know, there's like just nothing in it. And you just kind of have to figure out where you are and things like this. It can be done, but it's exceedingly rare. Yeah, I think that most games that try to like reinvent the wheel with stuff like that always end up making things worse mobs to level up as well as searching out copper veins to level up my mining skill. Personally, I'm someone that enjoys mob grinding in MMOs. I like having the opportunity to it turn off relaxing. my brain, relax, and watch yeah. something on my second monitor whilst still feeling like I'm making meaningful progression in a game. Embers Adrift allows that. me to do this. 
However, due to the game having quests and strategic group-based content, this is not your only form of progression. Okay. And due to the world being designed with a mix of both group mobs, solo mobs, aggressive mobs, and passive mobs, as well as constantly needing- I feel like the combat in this game is like dark and darker, except it's not action combat. It's tab targeting. That's pretty bad. Like, the combat in the game, like, I can't see anybody seeing the combat in this game and thinking to themselves, okay, I'm going to download it right now. To be aware of my surroundings for navigation purposes, yeah. grinding in this game felt more engaging and less brain dead than other MMOs. It's mob grinding, but it's more immersive mob grinding, if that makes sense. There's a very real possibility of me dying, I can easily get lost, and if I pull the wrong mob, it's gonna chase me across the map. It was during this time that I realized that the tab targeting combat in Embers Adrift actually has more depth to it than you'd initially think. Depending on your weapon, you can see the timings for your auto attack weapon swings. During periods of downtime, you can move yourself out of the mob's attack range, only going back into range when your attack timing is off cooldown to completely avoid taking damage whilst you're waiting for cooldowns. I so, there's a swing timer built into the game. Okay, that's crazy. I mean, if everything's on cooldown and you're not feeling lazy, why wouldn't you do this? So essentially, kiting mobs around lazy. and timing your attacks is a big part of optimizing your gameplay in Embers Adrift. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine that in a group setting, this could also allow for some rather unique encounters. After about 30 minutes of grinding, I got to level 2 and unlocked my third ability, which felt like a Wait nice... a second, it took him 30 minutes just to get to level 2? Holy fucking shit, that's insane. How many mobs do you have to farm? Yeah, Jesus, 30 minutes, for, yeah. And I bet level two to three is take, it's gonna take even longer, wow. Achievement at the time. Shortly after, I realized my character actually started with a bow and I could switch between melee and ranged weapons using the X hotkey. I continued to grind mobs, this time as a ranger, and eventually I made the mistake of attacking a mob intended for groups. This mob wrecked my face, so I ran away expecting it to de-aggro, but it didn't. I had to run all the way back to the camp to be rescued by a guard to get this mob off me. Lesson learned, be careful what you attack, because you're getting chased across the entire map if you're unable to kill your target. More mob grinding and that I hit sucks. level 3, no new abilities this time but additional stats that would allow me to take on slightly harder mobs. Okay. Another 45 minutes later and I dinged level 4, unlocking my 4th ability. Jesus. At this point I'd basically spent the first 2 hours of gameplay at the same forest outpost area grinding mobs. Uh -huh. It was time for me to venture further down the road. Eventually I came to a crossroads with new NPCs, I spoke to them accepting any quests they had and continued down the road to a village with even more NPCs, one of which would allow me to choose a second- I do feel like a game like this could work, but it has to be completely immersive. And that's kind of the problem, is that like whenever you see a game like this, it's just like the quality of the game and like the gameplay is just so, so bad. And if you had a game that's, like, massively immersive, it's, like, a real world, you know, like, if you could, like, you know, put your brain into the world and actually just experience it like another universe, then, yeah, I actually think something like this could be interesting. It could be, it could be more uh, immersive, but I don't think we're there yet, you know? Like, that's, that, that's really, like... Because whenever I look at this game, I just look at a game that makes things take longer. Profession, once my first profession was at level 6. To the east of this village was a mining camp where I needed to search for a lost boy. I explored the area, completed the quest objective, okay. and returned to the NPC. Sure. Eventually, to continue this quest, I needed a group, as the mobs in this area weren't soloable. I continued grinding mobs and gathering ore, eventually getting to level 6 prospecting, which allowed me to get my second profession. I chose weaponsmith. Okay. What I didn't know was that as a weaponsmith, I'd need resources such as logs and animal hides to create equipment that would be noticeable upgrades. Yeah, that This makes would sense. mean interacting and trading with other players, which is the core of the game. And like, so let's see here, what, what, are, what are the stats on it? So like, this is like straight up Dungeons and Dragons, because it says dice. 
and it says 1d3 so i'm assuming it can do one to one to three damage there and delay is three seconds so that's the swing timer the range of the attack durability it's a one-handed weapon it does damage as one-handed weapon yeah i think that pretty much makes sense it was at this moment that I felt the game would be best enjoyed in a friend group of three or six. I agree with that, if yeah. If you had six friends, you'd have each profession covered. With three friends, you could get by pretty well with one gathering profession and one crafting profession each. Yeah, something each. like that. If you're a solo player and you don't want to interact with people for trading or questing, then this game isn't for you. There's no way around it. As a pure solo experience, you'll get to the point where you'll want to upgrade your gear or do a quest, and you'll hit a wall. I continued playing the game. Yeah, this is kind of what, like, I, I remember the Josh Drive Hayes video about this kind of stuff, is that many of the games, the MMOs back in the day, they actually were very solo viable. Like, uh, you know, like the guild, uh, the EverQuest thing with the necromancers and stuff like that. So I, I think that a lot of people are remembering something that didn't necessarily exist. Solo, got to level 5, got my weapon smithing to level 6, and at that point I stopped playing because 1. I didn't have any friends to play with, Yeah. 2. My time zone is kinda awkward, and 3. During the recording of this video it was the beta of the game and not full release, so I didn't want to get too invested with the launch of the game being so close. That makes sense. I'm just not seeing it. I'm gonna be honest, I'm really not seeing it. Like, the... It's, is he gonna play it? Probably not. I, I'm not planning on playing this one. The, the truth is, like... So what do I think about okay, Ember's Adrift? First of all, I'm really happy this game exists. It's a unique game in today's MMO market purely yeah, because... I, I think that's good to have games that are different. I, I can appreciate what this game is trying to do while at the same time I'm uh, not excited about playing it. You see kind of what I'm saying? Because it relies so heavily on playing in a group. I actually can't think of a more group-based MMORPG. You could play this entire game in a group, group grind, group quest, share profession responsibilities, yeah. and so on. If you've got three to six friends yeah, to play- Yeah, as I said, I, I think that's good that there is a game like that that exists. It might not be for me, but maybe there are people out there that want to play something like this. Now, if you want my honest opinion, I think the quality of the game looks like garbage. Uh, the graphics look like trash. The combat is horrible. Like, there's literally no redeeming qualities about this game other than some interesting design decisions that kind of make me curious to see how people are going to respond to it. So, like, the truth is this game is going to be dead on release. It's going to come out... People will play it on day one or two. They'll get frustrated with how annoying and long that things are taking, and they're going to quit. Like, that's that's just what's going to happen. ...with and enjoy classic MMOs, then I think you'll have a great time together. I was surprised by how much of a difference not being able to see my character's live location on a map made to my sense of immersion. Having to look at the environment to navigate and find my bearings constantly made even the simplest of tasks more engaging. Visually, I yeah. think the game looks pretty decent for Unity indie MMO standards. Unfortunately, sure. whenever I play this game, the fans on my computer go absolutely nuts. I reached out to the devs yeah, to I, see... Yeah, I could tell that. I remember whenever he first zoned in, and like whenever he was trying to load all of the trees, it looked like the game just started stuttering and the frame rate went, the frame rate went like really, really bad. So it does seem like a game that's very poorly optimized. Remind me, reminded me of a uh, PUBG. Why this is, and apparently it's a problem with Unity MMOs and optimization. The combat system, whilst being slow and tab targeting, does feel engaging due to being able to move out of a mob's attack proximity. That, that's a cool Old school mob. MMO fans will enjoy this. Action combat MMO fans will probably not enjoy the combat. Yeah. Progression in this game feels extremely slow, which isn't a bad thing in my opinion, as every time you do achieve something, whether it be gaining a level, getting a new ability, getting the smallest gear upgrade, it feels extremely rewarding. 
it's hard to explain what it is. That is some... one of the good things about having small numbers, is that like if you go from three to four, you just gained 30% damage. So yeah, I, I do think that that's one of the good things about having numbers that are small, is that it's very easy to perceive massive increases like that. The thing about this game small gives you a sense of mystery yeah. and wonder. It's probably a combination of the long form progression, the beautiful OST, not having a map and having to read all of the dialogue to figure out things for yourself. But it's a great feeling to have whilst playing and something you'll only understand from playing the game. If you're a pure solo player, this game isn't for you. Either accept that and adapt to it or just don't play the game. Not yeah, as I said, I feel like the sluggishness and the slowness of combat in this game is very much like dark and darker, but it loses all of the, like it has all of the jank with none of the, the flavor and like the fun to it, you know? Every MMO has to be for everyone. It's also super refreshing to play a pure sub-fee MMO with no cash shop. Just knowing that everything another player is wearing is something they've earned in-game is something that I've really missed in MMOs. That is true. Obviously, I've scratched yeah. the surface of Embers Adrift in this video, but I feel like I've presented enough information and visuals about the game to help you figure out if this is something you're interested in. I didn't want to spoil the game too much as discovering the quests and figuring things out for yourself is a big part of the enjoyment you'll get from from playing. This is obviously a very niche MMO and it's received yeah, hardly so. any coverage by other channels on YouTube. Like I said, well the reason why a lot of other people haven't covered it, like I've been I I've been aware of this game is because the game just simply doesn't look very good. Like it, there's just like there's really nothing that's promising about this game. Like there, there's no like the only thing that's kind of promising is like the world building aspect of it with like not having a map and just like the exploration that that could provide. Yeah, it, it's just, I, I can't see, I, I can't see this game being able to maintain a player base large enough to be able to pay for the servers that it's hosted on. If you're a fan of games like EverQuest, Pantheon, Ultima, or even old school RuneScape, then maybe you should give Embers Adrift a try. And you've got to give props to the devs for sticking with this project for eight years and seeing it through to a full release. Something that rarely ever happens for these small team indie that's true. MMOs. But that's it that, for this that video. That is true. It, it, that is, it, it is admirable that like this is their this is their vision of the game and they're making the game the way that they want it to be. Right? And, and like I can respect that. It's like, hey, you know, we made this game. This game isn't for you. But there's some people out there that might like it. I think that's completely fine. Video yeah, guys, as always, let me know your thoughts on Embers Adrift in the comments below. Is this a game you're interested in? No. If you're currently playing it with friends, let me know about your experiences so far. Thanks for watching. Social media on screen. Help us out with a like to appease the algorithm gods. And I'll see you in the next one. Well, we've watched a lot of Lazy Peon's videos. You guys know all about them. I'll go ahead and link you, link you guys the video so you guys can give them a give it a like, give them a sub if you haven't already. But yeah, I would say that um yeah, this is just as I said, it's a very slow game. I think the graphics and the aesthetics of the game are kind of appealing. The low fantasy type thing with like no sub fee or anything like that. I think that's appealing too. I mean, there are some things about this game that are appealing. It's not like it's just a universally bad game with no sense or type of redeeming factors. I think there are redeeming factors. There's just not that many of them, basically. So would you be interested in playing a slow, boring game? Yeah, I, I think that, yes. I effectively, what what is this game to me? It seems to be slow and boring. The graphics are very, very bad. The combat is even worse. The world building is pretty good, I would say. But I think that there's a reason why a lot of people moved past having this kind of stuff. It's kind of like going back to, um, you know, like now that we have like all of these different types of power options, it's like going back to use coal or going back and it's like, actually, I think we should use a computer from 1995 instead of the ones that are out now. You know, it's like, there's a lot of reasons why people moved away from that old type of technology and design. So yeah, it's, it's new world without new world. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is old world, exactly.
it would just be an early game that's slow and boring. It was the same in EverQuest and the higher levels. Uh, with Haste, you had like 10 attacks per second. Yeah, that could be the case. I mean, I, I, I don't really know. But I just think like not showing monster levels. It's like, again, people that like to think different a lot sometimes also just go overboard with it. Devs use your quote, Embers of Drift is old world. Well, hey, I mean, like, listen, like, that's it, that's what it seems like to me. And if they want to make an old school MMO that appeals to people that like that kind of content, then it's totally okay. But I do feel like there are some things that are just fundamentally bad with this game. I think a great example of it is the way that mining works. Like, the, the way that you're mining something and then, like, the, the piece of uh, ore just goes under the ground. Like, that's really bad. And so... You can say that some of the jankiness is by design, but I think that whenever you take into consideration that the entire game is janky, then it's probably not by design. It's probably just janky. You know what I mean? Ugly ass pixel games, the shit gameplay is super popular, has nothing with technology. Well, I think there's a lot of reasons with it, right? What I'm saying is that there are a lot of reasons why games removed certain types of features because those features are just simply not fun to play. So let's go back over. I'll, I'll look at something else. But that's pretty much the way that I see it. I, I think this game is not super appealing. And I don't really see it existing for very long. Uh, especially after people play it and they actually get a hang of uh, you know what, what the game really has to offer.